Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hallmark Eats podcast. My name is Jasmine, and I'm here with the one and only my mahogany cast sister, Dory. How are you doing today, Dory? Hi, I'm good. I'm so excited to be here. We have a fantastic guest, so we are thrilled that this person could join us on the podcast today. Dory, do you want to introduce our special guest? Because I'm excited. Like, Next week is the movie, and I don't know how excited I can be. And I have my wines ready to go. <laughs> I mean, I'm thrilled because, so let me, so let's go back a little bit. So okay. we, because of the writer strike and the actor strike, it's been hard to find talent and people involved in the movies that we're watching to actually come on because they can't promote the podcast or they can't promote on the podcast. They can't promote their projects. So we're like trying to figure out because we are all so excited for Napa ever after. Like we are, we saw, we read about it. Then we saw like previews and we are just thrilled. And we were like, we have to find somebody um, to join. Like we have to find someone who was involved to join us on the podcast. And Give us so, the tea. yeah, <laughs> Jazz is all about the tea. She I is am. ready. <laughs> so we found that this is actually a story. The movie is based on a story by Wendy Ely Jackson, and we have her on the podcast with us, Yay! and we are so excited. This is thrilling. So, Wendy, welcome. We can't wait to talk to you about this. Hello, ladies. I am so excited and thrilled to be here with you and your listeners. This is a wonderful opportunity. I want to say thank you. Um, And I'm thankful that the WGA arbitration allows me to, I'm not breaking the line, none of that. I just, you know, they're just like SAG can give waivers and um, WGA can give waivers and they're all, there's a lot of different things, but am I able to promote? I am absolutely able to promote and I'm, I'm excited that I can. Um, We are too. Exactly. We are too. We, you know, we love that Hallmark branched out and started this mahogany series of movies. But we've really been waiting for like our big romance movie. Yes. We've been waiting for this crossover phenomenon and it's happening. Yes. Yes. Like you listen, we, you know, if you've listened to our other podcasts, we're like, we love this. This was great. But we really want the big romance, you know, like we've had some mahogany movies, more about family dynamics and family drama. And we've had, right, or sisterhood or like a a mystery, even a mystery being solved. And so we're like, okay, we've gotten through all of these. We want our romance. And so when we saw this, we all freaked out. So I really just wanted to start, Wendy, by asking you a little bit about yourself um, and kind of how you got into the business, what inspired you to do what you do, all that good stuff. So let me say, I've now been in this business in one form or another for, um, how old am I? Uh, For 31 years, right? This is all hair color, ladies and listeners. You can't see me. But Listen, I you guys. Um, yes, yes. Okay. If this, you saw Wendy, thirty-one no. years where? Where? Okay. Like thirty-one it's true. years ago, living in 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 West Hollywood. Um, Wendy, st- I started. So I, I went to UC. I went to Howard uh, for a bit, and I finished up at UC Berkeley. Um, and when I finished, I, I was actually going to go to law school. And um, I'm just not a person that wants to be in another classroom without windows. Not for three years. Mm-hmm. You know, for me. Um, and I remember my father um, asking me, he says, well, what is it that you want to do? And I said, I don't know. So I went and talked to my academic advisor at the time, um, Dr. Janet Edelman. And she said, Wendy, you're a, you're a great writer. Right? You're a great writer. You're a visual writer. Um, 
do you like movies and, and TV? And I'm a huge cinephile. I mean, that was, that was what I did growing up. Um, I would like to say that everybody said to read a book. I was an, I was an avid reader anyway. So my parents didn't have to stay on me about that. But what we did um, was we went to the movies a lot and we watched a lot of movies and we had VHS, VHS tapes everywhere. As a matter of fact, by the time my father died, we had over 2000 VHS oh. tapes and over a thousand DVDs. Okay. Wow. So, you had a full library over there. Yeah. My library was full over here with DVDs. <laughs> and, and everything from, um, you know, the 19... 19- 40s and 50s and my father was born in 1927 so I knew the classics and so um I've just kind of grown up as a cinephile uh I'm a I'm a sappy girl a, a sappy southern girl at heart <laughs> and who doesn't love love you know what I mean absolutely so, um the opportunity to to write a love story and have it based out of their elements of my life throughout this film um, was a, an opportunity of a lifetime. And so I'm glad that, I'm glad they got it done. Cause at first that, you know, first we were writing it and it was just like, oh, we're going to maybe put this on the back burner. And I was, I'm working on another move film for Hallmark as well. And so we're going to move forward with that one. And then it was come back. No, go ahead and get the, the first draft done. It, so it, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of, um, cha-cha-cha. And that, that's just the nature of, of this industry. So um, I, I have to tell you, it is, it, it's definitely, I've been a producer for a long time. My sweet spot has always been documentaries. Um, but this is my first, first studio film, not my first in life. But right. when a studio pays you to write, you're like, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. That's a different feeling. Yes, that is a different feeling. Because you know what you're written will, you know, is going is going to actually make the screen. So, um, that's 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 always the goal and the plan. Well, congratulations. Thank you. This is huge. And I have to say I relate so much because I grew up similarly. My dad loved movies. He was born in 1939. And so we, same thing, the basement was full of VHS tapes and then DVDs. I remember he started collecting DVDs for us before he had a DVD player. He was like, this is the way it's going. So I'm going to get in on the ground floor and yeah same thing like i loved watching all of those old classic black and white rom-coms and musicals and all of the things that make you fall in love with movies so i so relate to that and i love that you now get to do it for your career that's amazing i know right and i thought and i thought my collection was weird well ours wasn't movies ours was just records because my dad he was born in 1925 so he was there during the whole shebang. So between him and my mom, there had a whole record collection. I'm sitting here like, mm-hmm. we're gonna do all these records. <laughs> what are we gonna do? The record store girl. Girl, yeah, yeah that part. <laughs> they're making a comeback, right? The, yes, the, hey, yes. They're making a huge. As a matter of fact, that makes me think when I go to Atlanta this week, I'll probably box them up and ship them here because my my husband is a musician, and so we've got drums, we've got electric drums we've got acoustic drums but we don't have our record collection it's in atlanta so that makes me makes me want to go back home and i don't know we live in california it means the space could be real small mm-hmm. but we'll see. we'll see if we can find a place to put those records <laughs> so how did you get your start in the industry um so when i my first job i i took as a temp for um, back then it was, so Columbia Pictures Television and TriStar Television were two separate divisions, but owned by Sony Pictures, right? And so the head of the EVP of long form made for television movies, interesting, full, very full circle event, um, was her assistant was out. He was actually out looking for another job. Oh. And it was just supposed to be for two weeks, right? And um, after week one, I remember his name was Richie, something Richie. But anyway, 
he called me and said, listen, I'm going to recommend you for this job. Do you want it? And I was just like, uh, okay. Didn't, didn't know what I was walking into. <laughs> but, um, I took it and I learned at, at the time I was terrified of my boss. If you've ever seen the devil wears Prada, mm-hmm. I was Andy. I was working for Miranda. Mm-hmm. And this is that this is 1992. So we're, you know, the World Wide web was new. We still were using Rolodexes. There were no internet to look things up. There was no Google, all of those things. And I was very green. I was an English major. I understood story. Um, and I'd never been an administrative assistant before. I'd never been anybody's assistant before other than just the temp jobs that I was doing to make sure I could pay my rent. Um, and then she she hired me on full time. Her, her name was Helen Burno. Um, I think she still has that job. I think she's still the executive vice president of Sony. Um, wow. But it, I know she just did a um, a limited series uh, with Elizabeth Olsen called Life and Death. Um, you guys should see that. Ooh, really good. Ooh. Really good. So, oh, but I learned a lot. So, what we now call development in the studios was just an assistant job. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'd read probably an average of 30 to 40 scripts a week and um, listen to pitches from um, what became some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Um, listen to their pitches, hear their sob stories, hear them tell me how they hated my boss, but they needed the meeting. Um, <laughs> they, they hated it because this is a woman that knew story. She mm-hmm. knows story inside and out. Um, she knows how to give notes. She knows production. She's just, a, she's a freaking bad, I mean, she's a bad mama jamma. Mm-hmm. And at the time, you know, sometimes when you're going through things, you don't know how much you're learning and being able to be surrounded. I was working over at Culver Studios and, um, in the building. So you had John Feldheimer, who was the president of, at the time of Columbia and TriStar, uh, John went on to become the chairman of all of Lionsgate to this day. That's what, what he does. Um, you had all these made for television movies. That was big ABC, NBC, CBS. And um, so you're constantly looking at people magazine, uh, us entertainment uh, magazine, because you're looking for the, the stories. What are the big stories? What crazy stuff has some, who has killed whom and how can we make that a story? And so there was one called the Amy Fisher story, the Long Island Lolita. Yes. And we went after that story. And actually we made the CBS version with um, Alyssa Milano um, as our, I think Drew Barrymore was cast as, as Amy Fisher for NBC. I remember the competing Amy Fisher movies. I remember that. There were, that was the big thing. This teenager's (laughs) sleeping with this guy, this married man, and gonna kill his wife when she opens the door is just crazy. Crazy. So I learned a lot about development, right? Something mm-hmm. going from an adaptation, an actual story, and, and the script being written and, and casting and really packaging. And I didn't know much about agents either. And I remember one time Helen got so upset with me. Woo. Um, the moments that make you grow. The moment for me that made me grow, she said, either you know every agent, every important agent, who they represent and their phone numbers, or don't come back on a Monday. That was on a Friday. Oh. And all I could do was like, gulp, what am I going to do? Because, you know, what's a UTA? What's a William Morris? What's a CAA? What's a girl? Right. And um, I'm a, girl, a woman by the name of Mimi Kettleson. I need to see if I can find Mimi. Mimi, if you're out there, I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> Mimi Kellison says, I'm going to help you because you're dealing with uh, a, a woman who is a barracuda. So she gave me a list of every single agent, right? And a binder. And I went home and memorized everything. And by that, so by that Monday morning, it was, get me so-and-so on the phone. Just one moment. And that's when you'd push the button and you'd call the person and say, Helen, <laughs> Craig's on line three, boom, plug him in. And I was able to do that. Then it was read, highlight scripts and leave those scripts on my desk. 
find something that you like. If it resonates with you, go to the newsstand at 5 a.m. and go get, you know, People Magazine, find, highlight the stories, put them on my desk. And so that's how I got my start. Um, it's interesting that things have come full circle. I think if I'm, if I'm in my fifties, Helen, got to be, she damn sure got to be close to 80, but she's still, you know, I learned the most from her. I learned that how to turn a no into a maybe and a maybe into yes. I understood story. I understood, you know, really act structure, right? Cause filmmaking is about structure, structure, structure. Um, because I was long form. So a three act structure. And if you were on the TV side, um, you were talking about four or five act structure. So I grew up, I grew up yeah. really, really fast. Um, and being at Culver Studios, I just, I, I learned a lot. And ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. And before moving back to Atlanta, but that's, that's it in a nutshell. What an incredible place to learn. And like you said, to grow, because that's the best way to learn about how to write a script right is to read a million scripts a million by scripts? a million different writers that's right exactly and you should read from the greats so like i always i tell them so i'm a professor also at uc santa barbara university of california santa barbara and i teach screenwriting basic screening writing advanced screenwriting adaptation for motion picture genre studies which is for this uh coming semesters how to create bingeable tv or film right and I tell them all the time, it's not about you watching the film, right? It's about you reading. Then, And the more you read, and so Shonda Rhimes always talks about the person that she looked up to was Aaron Sorkin. And yeah. it's evident in her work, right? Yes, it is, she absolutely. Talks about the fast talkers, right? Exactly. Fast yeah. talking, quick, quick, quick pacing, Aaron Sorkin. And she said while she was at, you know, Dart, I don't know if it was at Dartmouth or at USC, she had like read everything, his plays, everything he had ever done. So when you look at some great filmmakers, uh, the the guy, I can't, his name escapes me at the moment. I feel bad about that. That wrote Parasite. He'd studied everything oh. Scorsese had ever done. Mm-hmm. Everything. So right. you, you find that writer or you find that filmmaker that has the palette that you have. Mm. Um, some people write... Um, I, I would probably make all of my colleagues upset at UCLA and, in, and NYU and USC, but one of my mentors, who's a big documentary filmmaker, Sam Pollard, I was asking him about somebody, I won't say his name because it's a very famous uh, mo- black movie producer. I was just like, have you watched this film? So he was just like, no, no. I was like, you know, this film, this film. But he's like, oh, he says, oh, he makes movies. I make films. And I was like, <laughs> what's the difference <laughs> and what he, what he really meant is they make he prefers to do something that transcends time mm. father, Francis Ford Coppola right that's yeah. a movie that no matter what year you were born that becomes a classic even if you don't like Tarantino Tarantino stuff those are films they withstand time or is there other kind of like, if I ask people about, you know, um, other 
movies. They would be like, oh yeah, I saw that back in the day, or they they may not remember it. So it's finding for me, um, and I'm growing. Listen, I I just binged um, Succession for the second time, and Jesse Armstrong has let us all know. Oh no, no. It's time for everybody to get back to the drawing table. <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought you were a writer. Ha, 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 ha. This is how you make complex characters that have to go. You have to put them through something. So um, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm working on digesting everything that Jesse Armstrong has done. But my palette, I love Nancy Myers. Yes. Yes. Queen if she were a, Nancy. If you were a spirit animal, she'd be she'd be my totem. I love that. <laughs> and I think a lot of our listeners can relate, right? Like exactly. we love love and we love romance. Love and the worlds that Nancy Myers creates are so beautiful and loving mm-hmm. and welcoming. And you just want to be, you just want to like live there, you know, wherever oh. she is, you want to live there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now that I'm older, I notice every place that she's built, you got to have a lot of money to live yes. there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I look at that, you know, um, Meryl Streep's restaurant and store. Oh, and it's yes. complicated. And I'm like, this no. exists nowhere. <laughs> it is too beautiful, too amazing. Oh. I love it. Oh, yeah. There is a woman named, if you, I don't know if you've ever been to Santa Barbara, there's a, um, a restaurant called Janine's Bakery. Mm-hmm. And I don't know this for certain, but I kind of feel like Meryl Streep's bakery restaurant is kind of loose. It reminds me of Janine's and Janine's is a local um, establishment here that everyone loves the, oh, every, the cakes and the danishes like in the coffee. I could just go on and on and on. Or even the sandwiches, and um, but when I when I look at like films like Parent Trap and the um, how she rewrote um, Father of the Bride, right? something's yeah. gonna give. Yes, yeah, uh, it's complicated, right? Um, I'm like, okay, the holiday. Uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> you start to me at myself as a writer is just kind of digesting as much as I can for things that resonate with me. I am, you know, I'm working on my comedy side, right? Um, I think in person, I've got great comedy timing, but comedy, writing comedy, I've heard Whoopi Goldberg says is not an easy, that's not an easy task. And Mm -hmm. for some people, it comes extreme, very naturally, the timing of it, right? Right. When you look at those big comedy writers, like the Wayan brothers, they've, they've, They've got it down. My friend Malcolm Lee, who's given you the, you know, the best man and uh, welcome home Roscoe Jenkins and uh, roll bounce and all these. Other, his Malcolm knows timing for for right. comedy. Yes. So you know, as you, I'm. I feel like I'm just getting my second wind, and in my fifties, and I'm I'm blessed to be able to write about things that I want to write about, that I care about, and uh, Napa Ever After I care quite deeply about. We do too. We do too. Oh my goodness. Um, this is like literally your first project for Hallmark, correct? Like this is your baby. Like my baby. Hi, kitty. How does it feel? Like how does it feel? Like that your work is going to be on Hallmark for everyone to see. Like what is like your first reaction? Like birthing this I saw, beautiful. I saw, the, I saw the billboard yesterday. <gasps> I'm so excited. Oh, and um. We were my, I just celebrated my wedding anniversary and, you know, we had kind of gotten off the, the ferry in Long Island. And I said, we, you know, we put, put our address into ways. And I was just like, oh, I still haven't seen the billboard. You know, it had been sent to me by the, the network. And, but I was just like, I've got to stand. Uh, I've got to see it for myself. And so it's over in Studio City, 12, uh, 12700 Ventura Boulevard, it's right? Not too far from, it's right by the Hallmark's um, headquarters. And as we were coming up Ventura, I could see it from the distance. Oh. And all I wanted to say so badly, Colin Lawrence lives in Canada. And actually he's, he's vacationing over in Europe right now. Um, I wanted to call uh, Denise Boutet and um, 
Tiffany Yvonne Cox and say, meet me here. Let's have sushi. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, let's, you know, let's do this and know y'all, but they, they're, they're, they've got to be very careful um, for, you know, SAG and, and, and after us. So, but I wanted to say, look, you know, I've never seen Denise on a billboard. I think this is her, might be her first studio billboard. Um, and Colin's of course Canadian, but I, you know, I hope they get a chance to see it, but uh, we're really excited. Uh, mm-hmm. That it there is it's a very surreal feeling, but it's a very humbling feeling, um, because now I'm like, okay, that's one. Let's 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 work on finish out the other and and kind of build upon this this kind of momentum because that's really what it is. You have to you have to ride the wave when the wave is with you. Otherwise, yes. you're sitting in some very stagnant waters for a long time. No, I totally agree. And uh, speaking of Napa Ever After, um, how was this story inspired? Like, did this come from personal experience, um, from others around you? What gave birth to Napa Ever After? So I was having a meeting um, with the senior vice president of Mahogany and and for, for on the TV side, movie side. And so she was telling me, you know, I live here in Santa Barbara County. Um, I had just um, learned about a woman named by the name of Iris Rudeau. Iris Rudeau is still living, but Iris Rudeau is the first African-American woman to ever own a winery in the United States. And she's still oh, wow. here. Oh, and so gosh. I've gotten to know Iris and <laughs> um, knowing Iris's story. And so this is not about Iris, but she's, Definitely, 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 definitely my inspiration. Iris is mm. in her 80s, Rudeau Vineyards. She she sold it a few years ago, but she's still very much so. She lives by the property. And so the one thing in, in Santa Barbara, I always tell people, listen, there's nothing here. Either you work at the university, you grow wine, you grow cannabis. I hope that doesn't offend your listeners, but this is California. <laughs> It's the business, <laughs> you know, or avocados, right? Right. And so it's it's almost funny when a doctor says, "Oh, do you drink wine?" It's like, well, don't y'all promote right? Wine they, in Santa we live in the middle of vineyards, okay? <laughs> right. It's like water. When Jesus' first miracle, boom, it all lives here. Boom. So, um, that they we talked about. This was last. April. Okay. We started talking about this and, and writing. Um, and let me say this. Her name is Tony Judkins, by the way. Tony Judkins is probably one of the kindest, smartest black women in Hollywood. No doubt. Extremely an extreme creative. What you're loving about mahogany um, in, in terms of films, that's Tony. And so mm-hmm. Tony gave I, I, I know so many people that want to work for, for Write for Hallmark. It's not even funny. People that I never knew wanted to write for Hallmark. They're like, how'd you get that gig? And so um, I gave her some writing samples of some other things that I've done. And um, she commissioned for me to start writing. And so I, I built this world. Um, I built this world. Uh, you always pull from one of the things that, you know, as a writer, you pull from what you know first, because that will become easier for you to do. So, um, the main character, uh, Denise Boutte is, you know, I told you I wanted to be a lawyer. So I, in for the film, I made her a lawyer, but then I have made her a lawyer that's on sabbatical. She leaves a job, right? Um, the, her love interest played by Colin Lawrence, um, is a widower. My mom died when I was 12. So it was just me and my dad. So that's part mm. of the story as well. And you you learn when um, when you have to go through things, right? You, you leave your full-time gig to do something else. You've got to figure out how to make things work all things in your life. And so there's some, there's this, there's some, the cultural nuance of having girlfriends, but then finding that guy that doesn't necessarily fit your type, 
I, you know, people come to the, you come to the table with all these types of wine. He can, you know, if you've ever seen the movie, like something new written by um, Sanaa. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All of these types. They say, Kenya, Kenya, you have a type. Have a type? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have a type. So she, she has this type, but um, in the very much so the Hallmark fashion. Um, she finds love and she finds out a lot of things about her own family and she reconciles with herself. And so the, even the names of the characters are people in my family. I right? love that. Oh. And it's my, it's my, my honor and my tribute to them. Um, so, you know, uh, pulling from all of that and um, I wrote the story um, I wrote the the first drafts of the script and then my mother-in-law passed mm-hmm. and um, Nina Wyman polished the script um, uh, because I was at that point, they needed, to, they needed, they had a deadline and my husband's mother had died. So um, they needed to get it out uh, as quickly as possible. So that's why it's, it's story, the story by me and the scripts by me, but then Nina Wyman came in for the polish and Nina's written, I don't know, 15, 20 Hallmark films. So she she was able to 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 finish it out for me, um, to give it the polish so they could be ready to shoot. And so they were ready to shoot. It was shot in May and shot in two weeks. Amazing. And- We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. If you love Downton Abbey, British period dramas, and espionage mixed with exhilarating romance, you won't want to miss out on author Rosanna M. White's new book, A Beautiful Disguise. In this Edwardian romance, Dire Straits forced Lady Marigold Fairfax and her brother to become private investigators in London when a handsome lord hires them to look into the father of Marigold's best friend for suspected international espionage, she is determined to discover the truth and even more determined to keep her heart from getting involved. Purchase a beautiful disguise for 30% off and free shipping at bakerbookhouse.com. That's bakerbookhouse.com or use the affiliate link below. Edited it in a, a month and a half. Um... And so I'm excited. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a great crew. Went to Canada, uh, watched them uh, film for the last several days, and yes, we're dying to know how it was visiting set. Tell us everything. So I, I'd never been to that part of Canada before. Filmed um, in a couple locations in Canada, Um, but uh, Okanagan Falls is where the vineyard was in Okanagan you have to you have to fly to Vancouver and then you get on a small little plane with helicopter you know with the propellers Woo. Oh, oh man of protecting not for the faint of heart not for the faint <laughs> of heart you fly into protecting and who's there they I think my house is as big as their um airport my house is small <laughs> Very small airport. And fortunately, my father was a was a pilot, so I was used to small airports. I was just, you know, it's just been a while. But it was beautiful. So um, the terrain looks much like, uh, you know, Napa Valley. Um, mm-hmm. They found location scouts did a really great job of of uh, giving it all of the design that that it would need. And the grapes were just starting to grow. Um, but even in writing the film, I had to figure out what's the researching. Had Iris, what do you do first? How do you know this and all of those different things? And so all of those things are as the grapes grow. So does the love that her mm. and Colin experience. And we're and, over here swooning. Yeah, that's, oh my yeah, god! Nice yeah, and they're nice. like, oh, they go, they go in, in, into a parallel. So um, that's uh, Canada's beautiful. It was hot. So in Santa, in Santa Barbara, it was uh, in May. I think it might have been like 67 degrees. Boy, in Canada, it was like 95 degrees. Oh, no. I was like, how, how is this? But um, And then there's a beautiful lake. There's water. So it was, it, was, it was gorgeous. And, you know, the cast and the crew were phenomenal. The, the EP, uh, Tia Smith. Um, Tia had been really big in the music industry and she crossed over into to, uh, television and film. And so, so she's a wonderful, um, wonderful producer. I've never been in a, and my husband came with me because 
course, he was not going to have FOMO and stay at home. (laughs) (laughs) He came with me and we we, uh, didn't drink a lot of wine, but we're surrounded by a lot of wine bottles, right? (laughs) Uh, Definitely staying uh, abreast. But really great crew. Um, um, I'm, I'm just, I found myself to be extremely, and I had met Denise before I had done another project that had been into the Pan-African um, Film Festival and we had mutual friends. So it was great to see her, uh, again and see her in action and, and Colin in action. So, um, um, there, oh, here's a tidbit. The original, uh, script was called First Kiss. It was not called Napa Ever After. Oh. It was renamed. So, um, I love First Kiss. kiss But that is not a marketable thing. You have the the powers that be, Hallmark, "Ah, we got to spin this off. And and they had told me that early on. They were like, you know, we're going to rename this. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, listen, we love your story. We're absolutely going to make this movie. The name goes. Yeah, the name goes. The name goes. I love that you got to go and visit and see your story come to life. Like that must've just been surreal to see your character. Like your character is just walking around in front of you. Like that's yeah. so the beautiful. pages are like, they're yeah. walking off the page. You're like, right. the world. Off the page. Right. It's also funny to watch them cut the pages that you write. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I, oh what can, is you, that can like? you give us like the tea of, What's, what parts of the script was cut off or can we get the DVD copy? <laughs> right. We want the extended director's cut. Thank you. Mm, I, I, listen, I want to see the extended director's cut. I know, right. I know that's seen right. I know that's right. Because there's, let me say this. For studios, there's so much. Um, another thing, I, I have to sing her praises. Um, Tony, what, before she was an executive, she, got, she cut her teeth in, as an editor. So Tony um, knows how to cut story. That's right. I would that's say right. There, there, it's rare, few and far between where you have an executive that says, no, drop it here, add music here, add music here, move this out. That scene doesn't work. Cut it from this. I mean, she's able to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, the director has mm-hmm. their cut, then the producer has their cut, and then the executives have their cut. That's and, right. And um, yeah. this is not... This is not a kumbaya moment. It's right. The network (laughs) right. Network Network is what the network gets. And for me, hey, I'm I'm here for it all. Exactly. Speaking of soundtracks, like of music, like did you get to hear any music that's gonna be added to the movie by any chance? Any zero. It's gonna be a surprise for all of us. I can, so can I say, so um, for those people, so what makes this really special? Um, I know when Mahogany la- launched last year um, with uh, Unspeakably Good Things, which was actually written by my friend Cass Seegers and, and directed by Ter- my other friend Terry J. Vaughn, um, it was, I did not realize it was for streaming, mm-hmm. not broadcast. And so it didn't occur to me, we were, we were in Canada and... Tony was there and she says, this is going to be for broadcast and streaming. And I was like, really? I was like, look at you, God. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You. So um, for those that may not have, um, because everybody doesn't subscribe to cable anymore. I'm probably one of the last of the Mohicans in my family, for sure, that has cable and streaming. But it will be available on both. And so I've, I've said, okay, do I watch it on streaming first? Because the East Coast will see it at 8 p.m. Right. Yes. And we're all on the West Coast. We're yeah. on the West Coast, which is also 8, 8 p.m. Right. But like I'm, I've, there are watch parties going on. There's Facebook Live parties going on on the East Coast. Um, I've even gotten pajamas for that one. Um, I love it. Oh, oh I love yeah. it. Listen for, to everybody, listen to the sound of my voice. Get yourself some green, green's one of my favorite things, emerald green pajamas. Okay. Check. Um, okay. Don't get just any, this is me. 
Don't get just any pizza. Get oh. yourself a gourmet pizza, right? Mm. Something fancy. Something Ooh. that you can pair with a good wine. Mm -hmm. mm. Set out your charcuterie board. Yes. Oh. Do all of your popcorn. For me, it's popcorn, raisinets, um, wine. I'm from Atlanta, so it's going to be smart water. Um, smart water and kick up your feet, have your toes done, your nails done, and sit there and enjoy and, and, and laugh and, and watch and watch the film. So no, I haven't heard the music. I have not seen the film. I will see I the film. I was just going to ask if you'd even yes. seen the cut yet. Is it going to be like a premiere or something maybe? I, I know there's a writer strike or... I have, I have, I have, I've, I've contemplated. So the head of Crown Media, here's a fun fact. The head of Crown Media was my babysitter and grew up several houses. We grew up in the same neighborhood. Our parents were friends, companions. I mean, my dad and her mom and, and I did she, when she greenlit this, she didn't even know it was me that wrote it. Oh my gosh. That's so full circle. Full full circle. circle. Right. It was about nepotism. It was not. That's she right. found out when I posted it. That's so, she's, she's like, wait, you wrote this? Come on. <laughs> Won't he do it? That's right. Full circle moment. It's like there's so. Wanya Lucas. Wanya Lucas has been one of the best role models that any brown girl like me could mm -hmm. ever want. Mm -hmm. um, much like me, she lost her father. Her father um, was the first black general manager of any major league baseball team. And that baseball team was uh, the Atlanta Braves. Oh, wow. So just similar, just watching her fortitude of, she went to Georgia Tech, then she went to Wharton Business School and and she led the, the Weather Channel, uh, Turner Broadcasting, President TV One, Public Broad, PBS, and, and, and now um, Hallmark. Um, but she didn't know. She mm. did not know. So two, two out of our little three streets in our neighborhood, we have... <laughs> The president and CEO of Crown and the writer of Napa right there. And so um, I sent her a picture, yeah, her and her mom, um, uh, yesterday of me standing in front of the, the billboard. And I just, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a very much so a full circle moment filled with humility. I will say writing for Hallmark is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's a brand yes. that you have. Mm -hmm. They know what their viewers, they are not going to deviate from what they know their audience to be. And for most, what most people don't know is they are, you know, they, they are one of the biggest broadcasters in the world. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. you, you know, you guys here will think about the, the people in middle America, you know, mid America, Northeast, the South, they know exactly who, their audiences, That's right. even their Canadian right. audience. They know what their audiences want. So this is a movie um, that plays for everyone, right? Um, because who doesn't want love? Who can't understand loss? Mm -hmm. uh, you have family that when you, or no family and you're looking for that, that connection. Um, but I think it's something uh, I think it's a film that everyone um, will enjoy. I do know the parts that they cut out, but I can't share them with you. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's off the T record, everybody. Yeah. Off the T record. <laughs> As we, the film comes out, you know, I can say, oh, yeah, okay, this is what. But um, yeah, as soon as it airs, we're going to be emailing you, like, okay, email tell me. us what's up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Sure. I have to say, I'm so moved hearing you talk about how this is such a full circle moment for you, but also like the community of Black creatives and executives in this world. Like, I am so moved and inspired. Like, just the fact that you have that connection with Wanya Lucas and that you um, know and are friends with the creators and writers, directors of unspeakably good things. Like, it just makes me so happy that we have this 
we're having this moment with Hallmark yeah, exactly. and that we are having this space. It just makes me really grateful, you know, that we have Absolutely. this platform for all of these people who have worked so hard in this business. And so that fans like me and jazz can see reflections of ourselves on the screen. Like if anyone is wondering why mahogany is so important, this is why, you know, mm-hmm. it is, it is for the viewers, but it's also for these hardworking, amazingly talented actors, directors, writers, creatives sure. who deserve their moment in the sun as well. So yeah. I'm really happy that you're having that moment. Yes. It, it, it's it. Let me say this. And I, I say this, no matter what industry you find that, it's really small. So when people say Hollywood is small, it's small, Mm -hmm. especially when you are uh, a a, a black woman, man, it's real tiny. I can, I can think of a connection to most people. Right. And I can think of, and that's why I remember, you know, growing up, you, you hear your parents say, you don't treat people the way they treat you. You treat people the way you want to be treated. Mm. Big difference. The vis- right. reaction is to give them what they've given you. But no, you treat people the way you want to be treated. And because here's the thing, you don't know what bridge you're going to have to, 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 to cross later right. in life, right? So pass the test early so you don't have to, to go back. But when I look at um, Will Packer, well, Packer's first cousin married my first cousin, had a kid. That's our first cousin. I love it. Um, <laughs> right? Crazy. I met um, Tasha Smith, introduced me to Vanessa Bell Calloway. Um, Sanaa Lathan graduated with me at UC Berkeley. Um, uh, even down to, so it was a woman named Francine Tanachuk who was a friend with my friends of my father, big Hollywood production uh, designer. That's how I met Eddie Murphy because I was on that set in, I think it's 92 of this movie that Eddie Murphy did. He was running for this president thing, but there's always little connections. My old boss, right? If I would have been flippant with the mouth, I would probably never, I mean, and I know some young people that would be very Mm -hmm. flippant with people. And I'm always like, Take take that down, mm-hmm. um, but Helen Verno, right, or the the chairman of Lionsgate, um, the the senior VP of uh, Ted Sarandos of Netflix is married to Nicole Avon, whose father was Clarence Avon, who was my mother in law's business partner. They co managed the SOS band and Cameo together. So people are just you can yeah. connect the dots easily. Right. Right. And his business, Charles King, also from Atlanta. His best friend was one of my best friends in high school, Michael McDade. Used to date my friend, you know. And so you can just like, when, when we were all much, 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 much younger, he's a happily married man now, let me say that. Um, but you you can you can connect the dots. Even my agent, who's now my, the person that's now my agent, Eric Reed at William Morris Endeavor, I've known him since kindergarten. Kindergarten. That's We're amazing. The class, that right? is amazing. Like there is a picture somewhere that exists of all of you. Exactly. And you know, your little picture day clothes and you're Child. in the picture together. It's just so incredible to have that past and that history. Oh, yeah. And then to be living in the present now. It's, 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 it's just incredible to hear it about is. all these connections. I love this. It's crazy. It's, it's so some of the, there's a woman that lives here. She says, I just feel like you're so connected. I said, no, I feel like more like I've had a Forrest Gump kind of life. (laughs) (laughs) We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. 
Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. I, I feel it's been kind of kind of gumpish in the sense of just always being, um, you don't know. You don't know in your early part of your life who's going to be what, right? Everybody kind right. of starts off with aspirations of doing one thing and they may pivot to something else. But you you treat people the way you want to be treated. You treat people with kindness. You lead with kindness and respect. And you work your craft, right? You don't, yeah. don't try to compete with anybody because God, you know, your gift will make room for you. God has a plan and a purpose for your own life. Do that. Ooh, I'm, not in I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in competition with anybody other than myself. And that right. comes back to me being obedient to doing what I'm here to do. And when my time is over, I will transition and leave my legacy. But it's my legacy, not in a competition with anybody else. I can't be, I can't do what Yvette Lee Bowser does. I can't do what Deborah Martin Chase. They're living the life that God ordained for them to live. Mm. That's right. People like Stephanie Elaine, who's the president of Motion Picture Academy. I mean, uh, Producers Guild, I mean, she's opening doors for people that look like me, right? Um, so I find that when you do what I find is I, I can, if I do what I'm supposed to do, there's my door. But me being in competition, knocking on somebody else's door, that just breeds resentment, strife, and malice, and a lot of frustration. And who has time for that? I know that's right. Come on. And rising tides lift all ships, right? Like oh. all of you are doing well. All exactly. of you are finding success in your respective kind of pockets. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's wonderful when those, you know, when those areas can come together. But like you said, you are staying true to your own path as 100%. are your colleagues, friends, um, and look where it has you like on a billboard. You have exactly. a billboard. It's a crazy. It's a billboard. Wow. Just that alone. I know. It's so crazy. amazing. You know, I'm, I'm very grateful to Hallmark to, to push it, to push it out and to believe in it and love it so much to do it. Because billboards are not cheap. That's right. Okay. That's not right. Not, especially on Ventura Boulevard. No. <laughs> not no. cheap. But no. I am I am I'm forever grateful for the, the leadership um, and the guidance and the and the love. And so um, hopefully I'll one day be in a position that I can pay that forward um, to other people as they're trying to get their their first done. That's amazing. Um, I know you mentioned this earlier, but I just want you like, last word of what do you want the viewers uh, to take away from Napa Ever After? What can they take away? You know, I want them to take away that life happens to us all. Um, but love, if you're, if you're looking for love, it's there. Sometimes it's not packaged the way you may think it should be packaged. Mm. But it's there. And be willing to be more fluid with how life treats you instead of um, going against the current get in that inner tube of life and float down that river and learn something. Love, learn to love the, the unlovable, even that is, even if the unlovable means yourself, learn mm -hmm. things about yourself, love your family, uh, and be wish, be willing to kind of open your heart to learn new things. And you might discover that, uh, you find the new love of your life in the most interesting of places. That's what I want everyone to know. Okay, Hallmarky, just make sure you have some tissue along with all the snacks that was listed by Wendy, please. <laughs> I know that's right. Like I am ready right now to put on my emerald green pajamas, yes. my pizza, <laughs> my charcuterie board, my wine. Like I'm ready. I'm ready. I have it all planned out. Green is also my favorite color. So you have one. Green. Green. Okay, green gang over here. Okay. Yes. That's right. Green gang. I green. love it. Green, 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 green. Absolutely. I love it. Um, and so now the question I've been dying to ask you since we started talking, yes. we want more from you. 
we mm. need more from you. What else are you working on? You mentioned another Hallmark project in the works. Tell yeah, us what's cool. coming up so we can get more of you. So there's one that I am co-writing. Um, don't we've got to figure out where that falls into the the programming? Waiting to hear back, but it's called Orange Blossom. Um, uh, it is being co-written with a woman by the name of Piper Hughley. <gasps> the romance author who yeah, I absolutely I adore. This girl, I'm about to scream. This <laughs> is so great. Really? I'm sorry, not on this podcast episode. I know you were freaked out too. <laughs> yes. So there's there's one that Piper and I are doing together. Um, I I wrote uh, the Ella Fitzgerald Marilyn Monroe story. It's a limited series. Oh, um, beautiful. And it's a, a beautiful, um, st real story of friendship and of tragedy and um, civil rights all mixed up into one and love. Uh, Ella had several loves and we know Marilyn had quite a few herself. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, what most people don't know were that these women were, they were very, very close friends. Um, Ella was a mentor to, to Marilyn. And in the, the 50s, late 50s, they were both the biggest stars, male or female, black and white on the planet. Amazing. And they had this wonderful friendship. So I wrote that limited series um, uh, myself and Gigi uh, Lavangi. Gigi wrote uh, the movie Stepmom, if you've ever seen the movie Stepmom. Yes. Yes. So Definitely. she and I wrote that together. Uh, I've got another one that I'm developing now. Um, this one's a little, gr this isn't really about love. <laughs> okay. Well, y'all know Hallmark is not about love. <laughs> This one's, this one's not this is this one's not love um but it's 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 early in its development i've been encouraged by an executive to write it this is more about politics um Ooh. so it's my it's my west wing my stab at the west wing but it's not the west wing this is about atlanta i um, need that in my life yes please and then I, i'm working on three documentaries at one time i've got one that i have to start i gotta shoot this week and that's all the ding ding dings are my producers on that are like, oh, okay, can you call us? Da, da, da. Again, I'm doing a podcast right now. Um, but uh, one's about um, just women, uh, women's rights. Uh, another one is about, it's called Pilgrim. And it's retracing the steps of Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King when, in 1957 when they went to India. And wow. along with uh, um, uh, Kapil Mahindra, Sam Pollard, and um, Martin Luther King III. And then I'm doing another doc about um, the producer is Lawrence Humphreys, who was the, who is the son of the, the former president of Tennessee State University, FAMU, uh, Frederick Humphreys. And so it's about the, the takeover of uh, Tennessee State University um, being a majority school taking over an HBCU. So um, I'm, I'm working in those those silos and I'm a full-time professor at UCSB. I was just Girl. going to ask, where does the fact that you are a professor fit into all of this? Yeah, it's, okay. it's, and it's, it's not lot. like I teach two classes a year. I teach about seven. Oh my goodness. So you know what? I heard Tyler Perry say this one time because when he was talking about he gets like sometimes eight to 10 hours of sleep. And I'm thinking, how? How, how in the world you get eight to 10 hours of sleep? Well, it's really, everything comes down to time management. Yeah. Mm. The time that some people are scrolling, I'm writing. When other people are, are, are doing whatever, it really comes down to time management. So yeah, I teach um, crew production. I teach... Um, uh, basic screenwriting, advanced screenwriting, uh, writing for TV. I teach creative writing. I teach film studies. Amazing. Full time. Full right. time. Not part time. So, um, and then I'm a, you know, I'm, I love my, my children are the loves of my life. My husband is definitely, definitely the love of my life. He's, he's so cute. 
I tell them all the time, you're easy on the eyes. Easy to easy on the eyes. That's probably <laughs> way with shit. Sorry, the language. But he is. Yes. He's very um it's it's nice. He is the example of someone not necessarily being your type. Mm-hmm. And he uh He's at, at heart, he's a farmer. Aww. I'm watching him now. We've got we've got these beds of vegetables and stuff, and he's we've been away, and so he's out there pruning and uh, doing samples of the soil and stuff before this hurricane hit. So um, it's it, it is. I'm getting my second one. I'm 53 years old, and I'm I you know when I was when my kids were young. They had me 500%. Right. Now that they are established, one's in LA, one's in New York, I can do me again. And um, that's it's a lot of fun. Well, we're thrilled that this second wind includes Hallmark it and does. that we got to meet you and talk to you. This was so incredible. I also... I'm going to demand that you come back and join us. You yes. and Piper Hughley. Absolutely. Yes. Piper's wonderful. I love her. Another oh person my gosh. She lives in Atlanta as well. So um, um, no, Piper's the best. She's a very kind. She too is a professor. That's right. I follow her on social media. Love her writing. Love her work. So we demand <laughs> that you both <laughs> return and talk to us we won't take no for an answer this is recorded for the world to hear <laughs> okay you all have okay. heard it it's happening okay, i'll let her know <laughs> yes I'll let her know it. she has been summoned by the mahogany girls we love yes. it we are so That's thrilled true. and we can't exactly. wait to watch this movie please everyone tune in to napa ever after right. saturday august 26 8 o'clock 7 o'clock central Yay. Yes, and then Wendy, where can everybody find you? I know we, I know we found you. <laughs> <laughs> where can you find me? Yes, or Instagram, Social or media. Oh, yeah, Instagram, it's just my name, Wendy Ely Jackson. Yeah, follow I'm, Wendy, so everyone. I'm, I'm, I don't really do what is it now? Twitter is called X or something. We still like, call it Twitter. You, 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 you. I don't, I don't do. Let me say this: I'm a little ancient. I can do Facebook. I can do IG. I can, I, I don't do TikTok. Um, I don't, I don't do those other things. It's not that I don't want to, who has the bandwidth? <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm on IG and, uh, and I'm, I'm definitely on, on, on Facebook and then the threads thing I'm on there, but I'm, I haven't really, I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> That's why I didn't join because I don't know what I'm going to do on there either. <laughs> yeah. I'm on threads, but I haven't threaded yet. So yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't threaded. know what that's all about. <laughs> so, but they, they you know, I, I'm there. And when I'm on LinkedIn. Yay. So everything is always my name, Wendy Ely Jackson. You can always find me. And if you just look up Wendy Jackson, you won't find me. So you have to use my, my, my middle and maiden name, Ely, E-L-E-Y. So everyone follow Wendy Ely, E-L-E-Y, Jackson, on social yes. media. Um, tune in to Napa Ever After, Hallmark Channel, um, on Saturday, August 26th. Um, you can find me, Dory, at Dory Benford on Twitter, at All the Feels Podcast on Twitter, um, and Jazz. You can definitely find me on Instagram and Twitter at Shreem16, S H R E E M 1 6. And also uh, make sure you guys are following the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast at all the other social medias. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave us a rating and review. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we're going to find this interview, okay? And oh, one, more plug? one more plug. Yes, absolutely. yes, yes. I need, I need this to be one of the highest rated Hallmark premieres ever. Yes. If, every, if your listeners can just ask ten people, ten people, give us that hour, that eight p.m. time slot this Saturday, 
I would be great. We will be really great because remember, we couldn't promote the way we wanted to promote. That's but right. I know with your listeners, if, if everybody reaches out for just 10 people, we'll do it. Yes, please support. We will be watching. Um, I will be live tweeting. It's been a while, but I will be back live tweeting. Come on, we're going to do it together. That's right, Jazz. Jazz is really good about her live tweeting. I, 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 I be on it. You know, if I'm yeah. at work, I'm on it usually. Yeah, I usually have time. It. I'm there. <laughs> And we will also be recapping the movie um, after course. it airs. So we will be doing a deep dive on the movie with Anne and Brie. We can't wait. Wendy, thank you so much for yes. joining. Thank you for hope, having me. Yes. And we hope that you will join us again. Absolutely. And I'll tell Piper. Yes, Piper. Yes. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thanks for listening.